My name is Brian Bowers. I was just interviewed by Keith Andrew uh, for the 48-hour film project in Guerrilla Film School and uh, just had an awesome time. Um, so hope you enjoyed the interview. Keith Andrew, and you're watching the one and only Keith Andrew Network. This is season six, 507, and I'm here with today's guest, Brian Bowers, and I just want to say thank you for being a guest on my talk show. Thank you for having me. Yeah, the honor is all mine. For people who want to know what my talk show is about, the whole point of my talk show is to show people that even with having a word in disability, I can stay them out to something. And at the same time, I'm able to turn myself into an example for people out there dealing with any types of learning disabilities and disabilities that never give up and prove people wrong. It proved them that labels do not dictate who you are and who you are in debate. It's approved to them you can stem out something. So hashtag breaking the labels. That being said, half hour, half hour of your time. Say anything you want, talk about whatever you want, freedom of speech, self-expressing, it is uncensored. And starting off, I saw that you were a filmmaker, and I was going to ask you, what were some of your favorite films that you ever made, and have you ever won any awards? Well, okay, so I'm not a filmmaker myself. I uh, What I do is I am a producer... Um, I work with filmmakers. Um, I work for a company called the 48 hour film project. Um, we're the world's largest timed film competition. Um, basically the idea is that, uh, filmmakers show up, they draw a genre out of a hat and then they have 48 hours to write, produce and edit a short film. Um, we also give them a, a, a character, a line of dialogue and a prop to be included in the film. And then, uh, you know, they have uh, basically a weekend to make this. They turn it back into us, and uh, we screen them all locally. Um, <clears throat> then they're judged by a panel of film professionals, and the top film from each city goes on to our international festival, which is called Film of Palooza. Uh, that's in a different location every year. Um, this past March, we were in, uh, Paris, France, and that was showcasing all of the fel the top films from our 2017 tour. Um, we're in over 130 cities around the world. Um, definitely the, the largest, um, and oldest, uh, thing of, of, of this type. So, um, I don't make films myself, but, uh, I help people make films through the project. Um, also, I have another kind of side project um, company called Gorilla Film School, which is uh, where if, uh, if the 48-hour film project is the thing that gives you the opportunity to make the short film um, and the screening and, and to be part of that global film community, um, Grill Film School is a chance for you to make better films, whether it's for the 48-hour film project or for your own projects. So that's more of like an educational platform for filmmakers and for actors, actually. I well, for an example, would I benefit from it? What would you benefit from? The uh, film school. Oh, Grill Film School? Yes. Yeah, um... We teach people, so there's the education for filmmakers that's out there is very poor. Um, there's, there's, first of all, there's not a lot of options out there. Um, you have the expensive film school, um, where a lot of, a lot of film schools, you don't even actually make films, um, until maybe your senior year, uh, which is bizarre to me, um. You, you spend all this money and all this time going to film school, studying all these theories and all that stuff, which is great, but you don't actually make a film until your last year, and then they just kind of push you out into the world. Um, 
outside of that, the other options are there are some uh, kind of expensive uh, courses that you could take online. Um, and a lot of times they're really more tactical. Um, they're geared towards like specific things. Um, you know, make these settings on your camera, but there's no uh, real sense of how to actually go about making a film. So Guerrilla Film School, we try and kind of bridge the gap and basically teach people how to make films um, that don't want to spend a lot of time or money going to film school, um, and they're not technically oriented. Um, so, you know, a lot of people have never made a film before in their life. The great thing now is that the technology is is so great right now that anybody could make a film. Um, there's there's people making films, feature films with iPhones. Um, Steven Soderbergh has a film out now called Unsane, shot entirely on iPhone sevens. Um, a couple of years ago, there was a film called Tangerine that went to Sundance that was shot on an iPhone 5. Um, so those are just one, you know, that's just one kind of example of how far the technology has come. You could actually shoot a film, you know, that could go to Sundance or that's going to be distributed by a major studio on just an iPhone. So the technology now is accessible to everybody. Um, so it's time for people to, you know, it's time for Hollywood to stop having the monopoly on that sort of education. And uh, that's the, the point of Guerrilla Film School. So we're going to teach you everything from, you know, how to come up with ideas for films to how to, you know, go about writing script, how to write dialogue, actual production work, and then editing, all that sort of stuff. But then also things like how to market your film, um, you know, how to self-distribute, all sorts of things from the viewpoint of someone who does not live in Hollywood, who is just, just wants to make films for fun, or, you know, maybe they want to, uh, you know, get them distributed on their own. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities right now. And that's, that's who we're kind of trying to reach out to. No, absolutely. And now the next question I was going to ask you while we're on subject about schools is, do you, have you ever uh, worked with people with disabilities? And would you be willing to work with people with disabilities? Um, have I worked with people with disabilities? Yeah. Um, and we've, we've, uh, we've worked with them through the 48 hour film project as well. Actually, we had a great story. Um, there was a entire team of, uh, filmmakers from, uh, I want to say Minneapolis last year or Milwaukee. Um, one of the you know, Midwestern states, um, that was, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. There it is. Um, they entered a team, they were entirely, uh, you know, learning disabled, um, an entire team of people that were learning disabled and they, uh, entered the project and made a film for, uh, this camp creatability, um, uh, that they, uh, were all a part of. So, um, it's, Definitely something that uh, anyone with a learning disability could do. No, absolutely. Now, the next question I, as I saw is about you or a director. What were some of your favorite films that you ever directed? Um, you know, again, I, I don't really... I'm not directing films, per se. Um, I'm working with the filmmakers that are actually doing this. So I'm, I'm more of a producer instead of a, uh, a director. Um, I can tell you there was a really great, fantastic film from uh, France that was made through the 
48 hour film project, our, our global grand champion, um, last year, that was, uh, actually my favorite from last year's tour, um, which would be, uh, great for people to check out if they were interested. All right. And also you are an up and coming professional actor who influenced you to become an actor and did you take acting classes or what do you recommend acting classes or acting schools? Like, uh, we would like to hear your story. Sure. Um, I started acting at a very young age. Um, I was uh, six years old. I was in first grade, the first time I ever stepped on stage. And uh, I just, I was always really, really comfortable in front of people on stage. Um, so I continued to act throughout high school. Um, I went to, then I, <clears throat> um, I was in a lot of different kinds of performing uh, avenues in high school. Uh, I was in show choir. I, I also play guitar and I, so I, I play guitar with, the uh, 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 jazz orchestra, but I also sang with them as well. And then, uh, did community theater and theater through the high school. So then I decided that I was going to go to school for theater. So I went to Baldwin Wallace college. Uh, it's now Baldwin Wallace university. Um, for the uh, BA theater program, um, which was great. And uh, that uh, really let me kind of, uh, because it's a, a small, smaller school, I was able to get some great roles and it really helped me grow as an actor. Um, and then it also kind of opened me up into uh, some other opportunities like in, in film um, I know I, I did a uh, couple of small, like independent film projects when I was in college there as well. Um, so <clears throat> a lot of the people that I worked with in college now have gone on to, um, you know, perform on Broadway, London's West End. Um, so these are all my my class rate classmates. Um, Baldwin Wallace is a uh, well known to be a, a great school for theater and for musical theater. Um, so um, while I don't really pursue acting full time, um, I still do shows for fun because um, I still love to do it. Um, I'm actually uh, going to be doing a show here in the fall called Pump Boys and Dinettes. It's actually the, the third time that I've I've done this show, particular show. All right. And the same question as before, have you ever acted with people with disabilities? Yes, actually. Um, when I did a show called uh, Gypsy, um, which is uh, many people might be familiar with the show, um, when I was in high school and this actually this whole theater company was dedicated to working with people with uh, physical disabilities. Um, so the uh, there were several uh, well a number of disabled people in the cast um, but like the the main one of the main roles uh, Louise she was uh, in a wheelchair and uh, some of the other uh, uh, ensemble members were uh, physically disabled as well. Um, but that, you know, did not stop them from having great performances. I mean, it was a good show. It was a great experience for me. Um, you know, there was certainly no reason why they should not have been up on stage. You know, they did a great job. No, absolutely. Now, the next question I was going to ask you is about social media. Does mm -hmm. social media dictate your career? You know, does your following dictate if people should work with you, if you should get a certain role? How do you feel about social media dictating your career, and how do you feel about it in general? Well, I don't think social media should dictate anything. I mean, social media is just... Social media is a tool, right? Um, and it's just uh, it's just an easier way for people to connect. Um, it's been great 
because, you know, from a business point of view, um, it's been great because you can use it to market to people. Um, you know, so there's a lot of opportunities there, but what, it, what it really comes down to is, you know, connecting with people that you're friends with or that you have, um, similar interests to. Um, so in that respect, I think social media has been great. Um, you know, it has allowed people from all over the world to, you know, to come together and connect in like Facebook groups or, you know, <clears throat> you know, follow YouTube channels and, and all that sort of stuff, um, in ways that we would not be able to connect with each other outside of social media. So I think it's a great tool. Um, if you see it as a tool, um, I don't think people should, uh, let social media run their lives, um, for sure. Um, you know, again, you still want to be able to make a human one-on-one -on -one connection with people. That's the most right. important thing, you know, whether you're networking, whether you and I are networking together face to face in the same room or we're networking on social media, it's still the same idea and people should treat it that way. And I think sometimes people kind of forget that. And that's, that's when things get, uh, out of hand with social media. No, absolutely. Now we're going to take a quick commercial break. You know, what's the remaining time? I'm going to pass it back William to you. Williams, Vanessa, Lina. I'm Asian Lalo. Hi, Michael. This is Cynthia Bass today. I'm Sonia Fisher. This is Shane Smith. My name is Alexandra Bowie. My name is Amelia Clover. Hi, I'm Amy Linden. Hi, I'm Anita Nicole Brown. It's Meg Green. Hi, my name is Asata Caldwell. Hi, everybody. I'm Brooke Percy. Hi, I'm Bryn Berg. Hi, I'm Casey Dunn. Hi, everybody. It's Cassandra Kavinsky. Hi, I'm Christina Breza. I'm Cindy Hogan. I'm Courtney Sinello. Hi, I'm Daisy. My name is Deborah Jane East. Hi, my name is Dianel Maasea. Hi, everyone. I'm Victoria London. Hi, I'm Heather Krona. Hi. I'm Heather Callahan Stevens. Hi, I'm Jay Nicole Ralph. My name is Jamie Patrell. My name is Tui. My name is Julio Brankovich. This is Kathleen Wills. Kimberly Amato. Hi, my name is Laura Putnam. I Hi, I'm Laura Chapanis. Hi, everyone. I'm Melissa Damas. This is Michelle Mupo, a.k.a. Fuchsia. I'm, the, I'm Rachel Oliver. Hi, my name is Sarah Joy Mount. Hi, I'm Susan Brender. Um, hi, everyone. This is Venus Leone. Hi, I'm Cheryl Turner. Hi, I'm Stephanie Herrera, and I was just on the Keith Andrew Network. It was tons of fun. We used up all our time and then some. I really recommend this show, and uh, try to be on a guest on Keith's show. It was super fun. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Season 6 of the Keith Andrew Network. I'm also my old guest phrase, uncensored. <laughs> it's funny because it was a big process from being uncensored to go to the Keith Angie Network. So now it's just the Keith Angie Network. Up I'm here is Mr. Brian. And what's the remaining time? I'm going to pass the show over to you. Was there anything you wanted to know? Anything you wanted to talk about? This is your time after all. Sure. Um, well, the one thing, uh, well, a couple things I wanted to, uh, for anybody that, that is interested in film, um, and it's it's uh, a great thing to get into. Um, and... For those of you that uh, are have learning disabilities or or do not, you know, you should not let that stop you. Um, film is something now that again anybody can make a film. Um, I think that the technology is accessible. Um, so if it's something that you're interested, I highly encourage you to to do that. And there's a couple different things you can check out. Um, the first is uh, the 48 Hour Film Project. Um, you can check out 48hourfilm.com. Um, that is our global um, timed film competition. And that, uh, you know, you it's a huge challenge to make a, uh, a film in, in just 48 hours, uh, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, we make over 5,000 films every year through the project. And the people that, that do this have all kind of bonded and uh, we've grown an online 
community of filmmakers and actors. So it's really a cool thing to be a part of. Um, plus, you get your film screened in an actual movie theater. Um, you know, even if it's uh, regardless of whether it's later on time, regardless of whether you get any awards for it or not, you're going to get your film screened in a movie theater, which is very cool. And, you know, for many people, um, this might be the only uh, chance that you would get to, to for that to happen. Um, so check out 48hourfilm.com. Second, if you are interested in learning how to make better films or uh, if you're interested in learning how to kind of get into acting, um, check out guerrillafilmschool.com. That's where we are, uh, you know, we're really trying to educate people, give them actionable steps and show them what's important to uh, whether it's to make a film or to act in front of a camera. No, absolutely. And my last two questions for you wrapping up is, are you on LinkedIn, Stage 32? Are you on Twitter, Instagram? How can people follow you? Yes, I'm on, I'm on all of those things. Um, you can, uh, so on, on Facebook, it's the, the Brian Bowers Project. Uh, pretty much everything else, it's Brian Bowers, uh, Twitter, at Brian Bowers. Um, Instagram, um, I think I'm on, uh, it's Brian Bowers Media. Um, LinkedIn, you could look up Brian Bowers and find me there. No, Absolutely. Now, my last question for you is, when I first approached you to be a guest on my talk show, what was your first reaction and what made you say yes? And how do you feel after being a guest? Oh, I was honored. Um, I, I was uh, surprised because uh, it's, always, it's always a, I don't know, I guess a fun feeling when someone, uh, and, and a bit of a surprise when someone actually wants to talk to you <laughs> about, uh, what you do, you know, um, and to do it on, uh, a show like you have. Um, so I was a little surprised, very honored, and, uh, it's been a lot of fun doing it. So, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, I do have a couple questions for you off the air. By wrapping up our interview segment, it was a real honor and privilege having you as a guest, and I'm looking forward to part two down the road. Likewise.